This module alone is worth the money. So touch down your arm to my chest And fix what needs fixing Cause you are what I believe in Man, that is nice. <laughs> One of the most underrated plugin manufacturer out there, PSP Audio, has been making really, really great plugins for a long time. They made some legendary plugins, the Vintage Warmer, the Old Timer. Lately, I've been enjoying and using a lot the Old Timer Multiband, a beast of a multiband tube compressor plugin. Uh, one of my favorite EQs was the Precursor, but I myself am guilty of forgetting about PSP way too often. In my defense, I also have so much stuff. But their new and updated flagship plugin, the Infinity Channel Strip, might be the most comprehensive plugin you can put on a slot and the best bang for your buck. You could mix an entire album just with this one. So let's take a look and hear how it sounds. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mix Plus TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy. Free plugins, discounts, special offers, every time new ones. And if you want to support the channel, but most important, access to the already big and always growing library of professional mix and mastering courses, videos, and tutorial here on the channel. Members only content. Click the join button down here, see all the perks of becoming a Mix Plus TV member, which also gives you mix consultations with me via Skype or email. Let's get to the video. All right, I don't really want to talk too much. I'd rather for this one to let the plugin speak for itself, first of all, because it sounds great. And second, because it's a very deep plugin with a lot of modules and a lot of processors in it. So the best way to showcase and understand what this plugin can do is do as many examples as possible on different materials. So first of all, what is the PSP Infinity Strip? It's basically a modular channel strip that you can customize any way you want. When you open the plugin for the first time, this is the default. You have a preamp section, a filter section, compressor section, Section and an EQ section. The first cool thing about the plugin is, of course, that you can swap these modules and change the routing just by clicking and dragging any module. The second cool thing is you can click here and you can add to this 500 series lookalike rack any of the modules that are available in the list. Right now, I'm just going to add the master control. So for the first tests, I can level match with and without the plugin. Let's take a look at what modules and what processors we have available in the Infinity Strip. The first one comes default is a preamp. In this case, we have a pre-80s. So the preamp famous on the large scale consoles, okay? But we actually have five different preamps to pick from the list. We have a simple transparent gain control in case you wanna just do gain staging with it. And the first cool thing is if you play any track and I'm gonna mute all the other modules for now, you have an auto button to auto set the gain from the specific material that you're running through the channel. I'm gonna set the reference lower than its default to simulate like gain staging on a high track count mix and play this piano and click auto. And you can see it lowered the gain automatically. If we go here in this part where the piano is higher in level, All right, that's pretty interesting. It basically does fader riding, in this case it's gain riding, on its own automatically, okay? I wouldn't leave it on the entire time. You just calibrate the system because this is the gain, it's not the fader, so it's gonna affect anything that comes after it, okay? But it's a good tool to have to set basic levels at the beginning of a mix. This function is available for all the other preamps, and we have four different colors preamp, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So we click on the 60 and you can see it added the drive section and the noise section, okay? You can decide if turn the noise completely off or make it auto. So it comes and goes with the audio and it auto mutes. And you have an analog button to engage or disengage this section alone. And let me show you how it sounds because this saturation is actually pretty nice. My favorite tend to be the 80s for most material, but 60s and 70s has a very distinct heavy vintage color. So drive all the way down. is a pretty rich sound. I'm trying to level match, but what you hear is mostly added harmonic content. In this case, the 60 add this very, very nice color in the low mid range. It 
kind of feels like it's shaving off a little bit of top end. Uh, not on this track, you can't really hear it because it doesn't have a lot of uh, top end, but listen to with and without. Pretty cool, let's hear the 70s. Right, the harmonic content on this one is more, you can hear it, the rise in level is more. I'm trying again to level match. Eighties. Now you want to tell me that's not a nice saturation. Uh, see the difference between the preamps is pretty clear. The seventies, given the same drive settings, is the one that adds more. Uh, audible distortion as in good saturation it, it, it doesn't really sound harsh or anything but it drives earlier than the others while this one is kind of a middle ground you can push it hard and it's slightly cleaner than the other so might be more suitable for like every track or something while you can pick the 60 and the 70s for like special tracks let's cycle through them So the difference is pretty obvious. They sound really, really good. I really like them. And then you also have the ADC 90s. So it basically simulates the old converters for special purposes. Uh, the drive on this one will not sound as good as the other because it basically simulates an old 12-bit converter. So for loops and like uh, drum machines, if you want like the retro sound, that's good for that. Okay, let's do another quick run of the preamps on drums because it's always a good reference to hear how a plugin reacts to fast transients. Hear how the low end reacts very, very differently between the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Let's go back to the 80s and I'm gonna drive the gain because of course you can drive the gain to get more distortion out of it if you want. So I'm gonna lower the level here. Okay, of course, I'm testing the limit of the saturation on this drum. You, again, can hear how much difference there is in the low end, especially in the saturation of the low end with the three preamps, uh, the kind of different splat that when driven to the max, the 70s and the 80s gives to you. So this is a quick overview of the different preamps, but we have a lot more on this plugin. This is just a preamp module. Next to it, we have the filter section. We have basic filter, so basically low pass and high pass, and you can have different slopes here. You have pro filters, so you have also a mid band here, and you can put this again at the beginning of the channel strip to clean up the material before hitting the preamps, the compressor, the EQs. And then you also have a sidechain filter, so the filters only for the sidechain for what comes next. We have then the three different compressors available on this plugin. We have Opto, 
fat and VCA. So the opto, of course, aside from the usual suspect, the vocal, bass, piano, uh, it also adds that very nice snap on drums. I'm going to show it to you right now. You wouldn't tell, right? Uh, an opto is not usually used on drums, but it's actually uh, the two A's and the three A's were pretty common uh, being used on kicks and snares. So, so this actually behave one-to-one -to, -one to what you expect from an I-class opto compressor. Then we have the FAT compressor. All the controls that you can find, the most famous FAT compressors out there. This is gonna be faster, more aggressive, and snappy. All right, let me give you an example. Here, if I engage the uh, sidechain external filter, then I can cut my low end here from the compressor, all right? This is the purpose of having the sidechain filters there. Without the external filters, the kick is gonna be choked. All right, we can find a good compromise there. Uh, they're so tweakable. You can change also the slope uh, of these filters for the sidechain. You can also use this mid band here to focus. For example, you have a vocal that has too much 3K, 2K. You set this one right here with a bell boost. You set the frequency and the compressor, whatever compressor comes after will react more to that range. So this is pretty cool to have. The next thing is, let's say you wanna squash something with this without sidechain filters. Okay, you have a mix knob on board for every type of compressor. So the Opto, the FET, and the VCA, which is the one that we're gonna uh, test right now. This is gonna be still fast and snappy, but cleaner than the FET. And I gotta say, this compressor sounds pretty damn nice. Next, we have the EQ. The first one is the channel EQ. You have four parametric band, and you can see you can select bell, shell with a hard slope, shell with a gentle slope, three different Q settings for the two mid band, and the same uh, that is for the highs, for the lows, peak, or the two shelves. Let's start removing some of the boominess that this drum has. Sounds nice for sure. Let's switch to the next one, which again, like I said, is my favorite, it's the precursor. This one has different controls. You have the frequencies here on the sliders and a fully variable 
uh, Q. This one doesn't have shelves, it's only belts, and you can change the value with this slider. So let's start. You hear how different EQs really push you to come up with different sounds. That's why we have so many different types of EQ, fully parametric, semi-parametric graphics. You also have an analog button here if you want the analog saturation on it or not. It's a pretty subtle color, but it's still there and you have the option of taking it out or not. Retro Q, this is another very colored EQ. Let's try it really quick. Listen to that low end. This, <laughs> this is definitely my favorite band on this one. Like the, the low end is so thick and solid with this. All right, this is already a really cool channel strip that I could save. Pre-80s, driven hard on drums, a VCA compressor, and then this retro EQ. Let's change source and see some of the other module. Also, before we do that, we have a full view mode, which gives you all the slots available, and a resizable view mode, which every time you add a module or you take a module away, it auto resizes. And then mini view mode, if you don't want to take too much real estate on your screen. Let's change source. All right, let's try this on vocals. I'm going to add the expander and I'm going to put the expander right at the beginning. I'm going to put the filters actually right at the beginning and cut a little bit of low end on this voice. Let's leave it at 30 and nothing at the top. And the expander just so, you know, if you have stuff like this, some noises, it's really good to clean that up first. So let's hear the first breath. I know See, I want to tame that a little bit. I know the season's wrap for change. Okay, you can leave it a little more loose. I know the season's wrap for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. It's tearing me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? All right, I'm going to go for the 70 preamps on this one. For the compressor, actually, let's do this. Let's uh, do the usual combo, right? We catch the peaks with the fat compressor, and we follow that one with an opto compressor after and see how that sounds. I know the season's ripe for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. It's tearing me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? All right, let's add the opto. I know the season's ripe for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. It's tearing me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? All right, sounds pretty nice and it sounds pretty solid. I'm not exaggerating the compressor here. Uh, usual combo, you know, the 76 and 2A and you can swap them if you want and do the opposite. And then the channel EQ, let's add this one with the retro EQ. I really like this. I know the season's wrap for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. It's tearing me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? Where will my heart come back to life? Nice top end right there. And then we also have a de -esser. We have a de-hummer as well as a module, you can see. Another cool addition that I was not expecting to see here, but is very welcome, is the reactive cue, which is basically a dynamic EQ. To find the frequency that I want to target, I'm just going to 
pull down the threshold and up the volume here and just play it. Let's get rid of that resonance there a little bit. So pull down the threshold and the amount of reduction that you want to do every time that range passes the threshold. You also have a below threshold if you want to do a push-pull kind of dynamic EQ. So nice, the dynamic EQ, as you can see, you can adjust the transition between above and below threshold. Uh, the frequency, of course, the Q, the type, and of course, the time here on the threshold. It's actually a really precise dynamic EQ, especially to have it in you know, such a comprehensive channel strip. We also have a saturator, which I didn't mention, but is absolutely cool. And I'm going to go here and just turn the analog off for this and everything off. So for the saturator, first of all, we have the magic eye uh, meter, which is super cool. We have the ceiling, so you can drive the signal in the saturator or you can lower the ceiling to add more saturation to the incoming signal. You have a smooth knob and a shape knob. So the shape, it gives you uh, different types of saturation for this. Valve 1, Valve 2, Tape 1, Tape 2, Soft Clip and Hard Clip. Let's start with Valve 1. And that's nice. You can also HPF if you don't want this module to oversaturate the low end. Let's try valve two, same settings. That's nice. You hear uh, more mid range on the valve two, more top end. This one, this, this bass doesn't have a lot of top end, so maybe we'll try really quick the saturator on something else, but a lot more growl in the low mid with the valve one and more mids and top on the valve two. Let's try tape. Love it, very reactive to different levels. You can hear the saturation changes like note by note and it saturates before the two valves and it has a very different type of saturation, which also, remember, will help you shave nominal peak level to any material. Let's try tape two. Once again, tape two is like a little more push than tape one, a little more mid-range saturation, different kind again, and then soft clip.
I mean, what's not to like? This is a pretty versatile, good sounding saturator on its own. Even if it didn't come with all the other modules, that's worth the money right there. Let me try really quick on vocals. So let me be what you ask me, please. So touch down you on to my child. Now listen to these vocals with this saturator and also look at the meter here at the gain reduction meter on Pro Tools. It actually tells you that is compressing natural compression uh, the saturation has on the material. Isn't this the best sounding compressor ever instead of using compression? That's it, it, I mean, it, I'm always surprised when I find a good saturator, what, how it can handle dynamics in such a natural way, okay? This module alone is worth the money. I see that your armor is thick And I'm not first pick but I'll bend To the anatomy you know you need So let me be what you ask me, please so touch down your arm to my chest And fix what needs fixing Cause you are what I believe in Man, that is nice. <laughs> I see that your armor is thick And I'm not first pick but I'll bend To the anatomy you know you need And of course I'm pushing, but you hear it. I see that your armor is thick And I'm not first pick but I'll bend To the anatomy you know you need So let me be what you ask me, please So touch down your arm to my chest And fix what needs fixing Cause you are what I believe in. Man, that sounds really nice. That is a nice surprise on this plugin. I mean, everything else sounds pretty good. Like I said, PSP has been making good plugins for a long time. What else can I say? This is PSP Infinity Strip. Uh, literally, you could mix an album just with this plugin and it would not be a compromise. I think, like I said in the intro, this is probably one of the best deals out there. I mean, this plugin is packed and for such a reasonable price. The saturator alone, it's worth the price tag for me, but you have four preamps, three compressors, uh, DSer, Dynamic EQ, Brickwall Limiters, Master Section, and whatever else. Definitely check it out and check out all the other plugins from PSP because they have some gems. Like I said, I'm a big fan of their multiband old timer uh, tube compressor and some other. I'll put the link in the info box down below. Check all the links before you go. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to really up your mix and mastering skills, click the join button, become a member. You also support the channel, but most important, you access to the extended library and always growing of in-depth professional mix and mastering courses. Stay tuned and click the notification bell because we have big news coming up on the channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.